Hello everyone, it is i7s and this is module 3.2, Cooling, Active Cooling. For this particular module, we're going to be going over active cooling, which is oftentimes uh, a very complicated topic. In my, I'm calling it active cooling. It pretty much involves the steam turbine and the thermo aqua tuner, as you see on the left. Before continuing, I highly, highly, highly recommend uh, watching 3.0, on cooling basics 3.1 on passive cooling and the entire module on heating basics because although this channel for this guide does not do a lot of super sciencey science stuff it's kinda upfront we will be diving into some more complex topics as we tackle this situation so let us get started so this is what we're going to do to kind of show an example of a base and it getting hot and everything like that. Let's dive into each of the pieces. On the far right, this igneous rock at a very high temperature is a metaphor. It is representing the concept of heat. It's really, really hot. If your base is this hot, you're pretty much probably doomed. Um, but what it's doing is we are taking the window tiles and taking the heat to the doors and then they are going into these metal tiles right here. And so this is supposed to, this inside right here, is supposed to be a metaphor of your base. Right now, it's, you know, it's kind of hot. It's got 120 degrees. The metal tiles are at 50 degrees Celsius. It's pretty hot. So we are just you can ignore all of this on the right. The main thing to take away from this is right now we are in a situation where we need to cool down our base as seen in this example right here. As for everything on the far left, uh, you can ignore this. I use this to fill up the uh, cooling loop. We'll go into that in a second. So the main parts for creating what many Oni players will have to create is the steam turbine thermo aqua tuner setup. First, you will need to create a room like this. The reason why is you're gonna create a room that will need to be vacuumed out. I'm gonna pause it real quick so I can really focus. You're gonna create a room that is vacuumed out. You can do this by building the majority of the room and it doesn't matter what gas is inside and then you build a gas pump made out of steel. You then use insulated pipe to be out of any material. I like using igneous rock, but it, it's fine. And then a gas vent right here. Personally, preference here. You get some automation also made out of steel. I like being safe. You put a switch in. We're gonna turn it off for right now. And then, also with steel, you need to power it. Once you've done that, and pretend that there is a gas in here, you will turn it on, it'll suck up the gas, suck it out here, and then you've created a vacuum room, and then these parts will no longer be needed, you don't have to worry about it, and since the whole room is enclosed by that point, you could just leave these here, and they won't draw any power, they will not break, they're fine. The next thing you're going to want is you want the thermo aqua tuner. To keep things simple, we are going to assume that we are making this exact setup. There are other setups that might be able to work as well, um, but this is the most common setup. You're going to want to make the thermo aqua tuner out of steel. And the reason for this is this room gets pretty hot. So if we look over uh, this right here, this adds 200 degrees Celsius to the overheat temperature, which basically means that when it's made out of steel, this thermo aqua tuner will not break. Next up, also made out of steel, you're gonna want to add a, uh, here it is, a liquid pipe thermo sensor. And then you're gonna take that automation wire also made out of steel and connected right up to the aqua tuner. The reason for this is you can control the temperature of the liquid that is in the pipes. We'll go over that in a second. And 
uh, you can fiddle with the numbers. Um, but basically, this is uh, how you cool the, uh, the cooling loop. We talked about cooling loops in the previous modules. Um, but basically, you want to bring the pipe down. And this is where it gets weird. You're going to go across and then into the first port and then down and then to the left. And then you put a bridge there and a bridge there with the starting points of the first bridge right here and then the other bridge right there. Then starting from this point right here, you get your insulated liquid pipes and you go down one and then to the right one. It's very weird. I'm not going to explain it, but basically it helps the flow of liquid when this machine is running and when it's not. It then will lead into the place that you're trying to cool. For this case, it's all of these metal blocks going this way. We then leave our, quote, bit colony base and then bridge over. And then we have this, and that is cooling these down as well as this. And then forget about this bridge. It then goes back down and starts all over again. Over time, your colony will heat up. And then by the time it gets here, it'll trigger the automation, triggering the thermo aqua tuner. And the main point of the thermo aqua tuner is this fact right here, that it cools it by minus 14 degrees Celsius. Next up, let's go over the steam turbine. I feel like this makes sense. So let's pretend that the thermo aqua tuner, actually we can get this started. Now, the thermo aqua tuner is active and it's running. And although it's not really showing it right now, it will eventually get hot. It'll heat up this water. You're going to want to put water in this room right here. I just put 500-ish kilograms, basically a whole good floor of it right here. There's probably more sciencey numbers, but a good floor of it right here. And what's going to happen is as the thermo aqua tuner runs, it heats up this water, and then this water will then... Uh, evaporate turning into steam and this whole room fills into uh, steam and then that's where the steam turbine comes into play someone in the channel uh, asked about this setup and uh, the main thing to keep in mind is the steam turbine right here its goal in this exact setup is to not create enough power to justify the power consumption of the thermo aqua tuner this is a lot this is decent, but it's not going to maximize power that way. That's not the point. The main point is we want to suck up the steam that is in here. And then it's going to go down this pipe right here and out this liquid vent. This is also made out of steel, and I made this out of igneous rock, just like the rest of the pipes as well. And then because it's right here that water will be coming down when this is sucking up the steam, it will sprinkle the water onto the thermo aqua tuner, which will cause the thermo aqua tuner as the building to basically be cooled down. The sprinkling of water cools it down. And then it lands down here, and then it turns back into steam. Bada bing, repeat it. There you go, bada bing, repeat it. So that's the main point of the steam turbine, that it cools essentially the thermo aqua tuner so both of these can run. The power that it generates is nice, but it is not the main point. And because of that, you're going to have to tap into your actual power sources. I've released a module talking about the generators, module 7.0. I recommend checking that out to see about how to start creating power. So to recap, everything in this building section right here, this area, should be made out of steel. And if it's something else, it should be made out of igneous rock. The surrounding walls can be made out of ceramic, but another suitable, easier to get material is also uh, igneous rock as well. You could do that as well. And so let's see this in action. So right now, the water, the polluted water. Yes, let's talk about that. You're going to want to fill this up with polluted water. The reason why polluted water is the go-to is this point right here, because it is able to get close to 20 degrees negative 20 degrees celsius before turning into a uh, solid this can make it a really good beginner to mid-level cooling liquid for your cooling loop you don't have to worry about it getting uh completely solid 
Just make sure that whatever you set this to, you subtract uh, 14 from it. And then in that case, it would be uh, negative 4 degrees, so that's still fine. You could even do, um, let's say, negative 5 degrees. So then that would put it at negative 19 degrees Celsius, and you would still be good to go. Um, it won't solidify in a case like that. So let's fast forward a little bit and see if this room can be filled with steam so we can actually see what it looks like as it's cooling down these metal tiles. Okay, so we fast forward a good bit. Um, the reason why up here it's not cooling down as much is because, well, to be honest, the cooling loop doesn't go all the way up there. You do not need to put the cooling loop everywhere. In fact, if we pretend that our base is literally just this building and this building, you would do fine with a single line of um, radiant liquid pipe, maybe two. Um, but yeah, also <laughs> I made it keep going a good bit and the liquid has gotten pretty cold. Um, right now, it's set to be above uh, 10 degrees. I put it back to 10. Um, it's gotten pretty cold, uh, which is, f you know, you got to play with the numbers with your base depending on how big it is, uh, but that's not really much of an issue. But it, sh it does definitely drive home the point. We went from 50 degrees uh, to now, uh, well, 3 degrees. So this is probably colder than what you would want. So to be safe, try another uh temperature like 20 and then um you could do it lower if you really need to jump start the cooling but um do 20 and then you know see if that works for your colony so yeah that's pretty much what uh one of these setups looks like you will have the steam turbine on top with all five ports exposed and a liquid vent coming down It'll drop the water onto the thermo aqua tuner. Then you have the weird kind of spaghettification of these pipes right here with two bridges. And uh, you can even see it. It goes over here and then plop. And then it goes sometimes right there and plop. And there you go. It'll go around. It'll cool your base. And then it'll come back. Um, I put a battery on this side of it. Uh, just, you know, because if this ever did run and generate power, it'll provide power to that. You, uh, I use a transformer as well, and the reason for this is it makes it easier to, you know, put a pipe through here and into the thermo aqua tuner rather than doing this setup right here. And then you do need to fill it up with polluted water, and you could do that with this setup right here, and it'll, um, it'll go, and then I use a bridge into the loop. By doing it this way, it'll keep going until there's, uh, no more spaces to fill, then it stops on its own which is nice, then you can deconstruct this um, and you're good to go. And then I will show you guys as a little bit extra um, what happens if this heats back up. So what we're going to do is we we only need a clip because this one's at 500 and this one is at 154. So if we just uh, close that for a second, heat's coming in. It's now at 70. As you could tell, the heat is going. Um, We'll also do this one as well. Boom, now a lot of heat's coming this way. And so now we can close that. And uh, this will definitely, um, after some time, it'll kick on the cooling loop again because now that the room is hot, it did it really quickly. But uh, And if you build your colony, it won't heat up that quick. But as you can tell, right now it's pretty hot. So now, oh, it has kicked back on uh, because it's above 20 and now this is running again. And as uh, eventually what will happen is it'll start cooling again. You can even see it right there. The orange is coming out of the yellow. So although we haven't seen the vacuum turn into steam, trust me, it eventually will. Uh, if you're, Right now the water has even gone up to 60 degrees Celsius. So eventually it'll uh, evaporate and turn into steam and then this will work. But for the case of making this, I highly do recommend making one of these. There are more complex alternative designs, but for those that are just trying to look for a straightforward guide, this is one of those things you're going to have to make. It's probably going to be the toughest thing you're going to have to make because you're going to have to get so many pieces of steel. Even if this gas pump 
breaks after uh, sucking up all the whatever you have in here, um, <coughs> which is fine if it breaks. Uh, the fact that you're going to have to get so much steel, you're going to have to get 1,200 um, pieces of steel. That's going to be a lot of work, and this is one of those big problems that a lot of new players have to solve because eventually your base will naturally heat up. Even something as simple as using the electric grill will add some heat to the surrounding area. So that is why this design is very important. Because this topic is so complex, if there's anything missing that you guys who are more experienced or more science you would like to add, please add that in the comment section below. I really wanted to uh, tackle this topic. It was one of the very first problems I had to deal with and I wanted to do it in a very straightforward guide without worrying about too much numbers and technicality. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions about anything else, just put them in the uh, comment section below. Thank you so much. I'm Sevens, and I'll see you guys in the next one.